that's good. Just a second and let another couple of stragglers in. If you might have everyone, I'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, welcome inside the press room of the Trust Golf Women's Scottish Open. We're here with Rolex Rankings number two, Minji Lee. Uh, Minji, you played golf last weekend. Evian was the defending champion. I know it probably wasn't as good of a finish as you were hoping for, but uh, how did you feel like you played last week at Evian? Um, last week was quite up and down. You know, I, I feel like I made a lot of birdies, but I also had some quite large scores on a few holes and, you know, made a few soft bogeys here and there. So, you know, um, I could take the positives and also reflect on um, the things that I could do better. So, you know, this week is a new week and um, excited for some links golf. Happy to be back in Scotland, I'm sure. Yeah, great weather so far. How do you how do you prepare yourself? I mean, obviously being from Australia, I know that the wind is a little, is your friend. <laughs> You're very familiar with it, but how do you prepare yourself um, playing a golf course like Evian last week and then coming here to Dundonald? I mean, I think totally different mindset, really. Like ev you kind of assess the golf course when you practice it, um, when you play your practice rounds. And like Evian is totally different from obviously golf in Scotland. So I think I don't even think about, you know, what I did there and what I did, what I'm doing here. So um, yeah, I just focus on the things I need to do here for like Link's style of play and um, just prepare that way. You've had a big season, two wins already, one of those being the U.S. Women's Open uh, presented by Chromatica at Pine Needles. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of assess your year. I mean, you've played ridiculously solid, have played ridiculously solid up into the Cognizant Founders Cup where you finally got that win, and then just a few weeks later backed it up. How mm -hmm. would you just assess your year overall? Um, I think it's been uh, quite solid. Um, you know, I've been striking it pretty good. Um, even after U.S. Open and um, finished well at KPMG and um, you know, probably didn't strike it as good um, at Evian, but um, I, I think that maybe it's just a frame of mind. Like maybe I had a little bit too many expectations for myself. And, you know, especially when you're defending, I think you have that little bit extra pressure. So um, just going into this week, I'm going to just, you know, try and have a bit more fun on the golf course and, you know, um, be able to like imagine my shots a little bit better. I think, um, it's going to work well for me a bit like for Lynx golf. You got that first major win last year um, and obviously backed it up this year with another and then another win. How do you manage those expectations when you feel like you're starting to kind of reach the pinnacle of your game and finally see all that hard work pay off? Um, you know, I feel like it's a probably a day to day thing. Um, you know, your expectations can get really high, um, but I think that just shows how much it means to you so um you know I just try to you know ground myself every every day and um just focus on the things that I that are my goals and um just take it one step at a time really uh, we have a couple questions on the zoom from Bethann Bethann if you want to unmute your mic yes hello hello I, how would you describe your feelings Toward Lynx Golf, and when did you first feel like you you understood it? I think I still don't understand it, but I don't think anybody does because you know it can give you it can really give you anything. Um, obviously, the weather is really dependent on um, how tough like Lynx Golf can play. So I I think the beauty of it is that it's always different. Um, so I don't know what to expect on the day. So you really got to take it one shot at a time. And that's kind of, I think that's what makes it so great. Do you, do you think your patience as a person in general helps you, like your overall demeanor? Oh, definitely. I mean, it's definitely a test of patience if it's windy out there or raining or, you know, you could have both and it could be the most horrible day, but you still got to, you got to play. So I think um, definitely patience as a person plays a really big part in, um, like Lynx golf in general. And then just my last question, what have you heard about Muirfield? Um, my coach said it was just really quite a tough track, um, but I'm not sure how they're going to set it up for the women's in comparison to the men's. So um, he's only been to like men's events. So um, I know it's going to be a really great test of golf and it's, it's going to be 
um, really good. Thanks. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, um, this is your sixth appearance in this event. Um, you played, you, you say you're, you're not really sure day to day, but you played really well on, on Link style golf. I mean, your highest finish here is a solo second in 2018. 2017, you finished eighth when it was here at Dundonald. Uh, I mean, oh, I did. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. What do you do to adjust? You know, I when I was playing this golf course, I couldn't really remember the holes. So I'm not sure if they've changed it since then, but I only remember like three holes. Um, so I, I don't know. And I don't think I really need to adjust. I think um, because it's a different type of kind of style of golf that you have to play, I think it's you just don't think of it as the same way you would play it in, on a regular golf course. So I, I don't know. I, I just... Um, take it one shot at a time and I think that's all you can do really do you think having you know, play, uh, growing up playing in Aussie golf um, do you think having that knowledge of playing in the wind and playing when it's really hard pan and really windy mm. does that, do you think that helps you at all I mean the hard pan is not the same like I didn't really play that many courses that are linksy growing up um, I played off Kaikuya grass uh, which is very weedy and fluffy so um, but in terms of wind I, I I did grow up in quite windy conditions and obviously living, living in Texas now, it's windy every day. But um, yeah, I, I just think maybe controlling the ball a little bit, um, I think has helped me um, grow, like growing up with the wind. You've played this event, like I said, six, this will be your sixth appearance. I mean, how have you seen this event evolve over the years? I mean, Trust Golf, Visit Scotland have both really put a lot of time and energy into this event. How have you seen the championship just get better? I feel like um, just, maybe like marketing the tournament in general. I think a lot more people have come out to watch um, over the few, over the past couple of years or few years that we've had um, the Scottish Open. And I think in the beginning, it was probably not, um, not as a big event um, than it is now. And I think just the caliber of um, players um, coming to play, I think just shows that the tournament's getting better and better. It's been a big year for Scottish golf, obviously, with the 150th Open at St. Yes. Andrews. We're playing next week at Muirfield. We're playing here. Um, a lot of other really great events have been held in the country this year. How excited are you to just be part of some of those big events and, and basically the, the country where golf was started? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think um, watching, um, you know, watching the Open at St. Andrews, um, I've never been there and I've never played there. So I was, I'm hoping that we get to go there soon. Um, but it just... I don't know. It's just different just watching it. And I wish I was able to experience it in person because my brother did play um, maybe next time, but um, it's just, it's just pretty cool to be in Scotland and it is the home of golf. <laughs> Let's chat a little bit about next week. I mean, this is such a big stretch of golf. Um, this game. I mean, you have four majors crammed kind of right. into a couple of months. Mm -hmm. What's your energy level? I mean, you've had, again, had those two wins. Where are you at with your energy right now and how are you kind of conserving it? Um, with one more major test left um and you know last week it was quite hot um and the week couple of weeks before that in texas it, it's been really really hot so um i think i'm a little bit tired from that but i think the cool weather will you know maybe balance my energy a little bit um so i think i'm just trying to conserve energy for next week obviously but um i think depending on the weather it just depends on how much practice I do. So um, if it's super windy, I probably will do a little bit less. So that's pretty much how I'm going to go about it. Any questions in the room? And if we have any further ones on the Zoom, just indicate some in the chat. Um, we'll just end it here. I mean, just some of your goals this week. Um, obviously, the, where this is in the calendar is really great because you can kind of get yourself back used to links golf at this event, mm -hmm. play a really top-notch event, and then head to AIG. Yeah. Um, how much are you, will you use this as not only a tune-up for next week, but really just to get yourself more comfortable with links golf? I mean, um, I think the golf course isn't playing too, too hard and fast at the moment. So I'm not really sure what it's going to be at Millfield, but I think in terms of the wind, I think it's, um, it will be good to, you know, just imagine how the ball will react in the wind and just how it's going to react on the greens. So I think in that um, aspect, I think it will be a good, you know, good prep for next week. Beautiful. Benji, good luck this week. Thank See you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.